Okay, guys. Here we go. This is this is going to be Anthem. Tommy Kerberg at the Friends Arena. So if you guys don't know the show Chess, it's kind of like the younger sibling to like Les Mis combined with Phantom of the Opera. It it was like very popular in like the mid 2000, between 2000, 2010. And it was, uh, I think this role was originally done by Josh Groban. Uh, and I think you could probably hear that. It's very Josh Groban stylized. But Tommy Kerberg... Guys, he kind of does. He's such an iconic singer. He has such a, a raw, unique voice. Uh, and I'm sorry to hear, as you said, Sprawlis, he was he was in the hospital for two months with heart disease, uh, with a combination of heart disease and and COVID. And he's getting back to it right now. Uh, so it's awesome that we can kind of listen to this and celebrate his voice. Uh, yes. So he was before. Did he do chess before Josh Groban did though? Oh, it was written for Tommy. All right. This is why I love doing this because I learned so much. So I, I know the Josh Groban version, but Tommy Kerberg sang the show before Josh Groban did it. Awesome. So it was written specifically for his voice even better because you can hear how well this song fits in Tommy's voice. And I was about to say like, yes, and Adam Pascal did chess as well. And Adam Pascal is like Broadway superstar kind of does everything. Um, Tommy Kerberg's voice fits so well in this song. And you can tell if you try to sing along, you're going to feel like it's like it's out of your range. This is a deceptively high, difficult song to sing. And yet the way he does it, it doesn't sound like it's anywhere strangely in his range. I mean, you'll feel that more, especially if you're a guy. Um, even if you're used to singing high, you're, you're going to feel it completely it fits his voice so well there's no tangible audible difference in his range when he goes up and down which is it's one of those skills that's so subtle 
and hard to recognize, but when you hear it and when you kind of understand how difficult that is, it yields so much more appreciation for an amazing singer like this. And the fact that he can keep that steely forward sound, this is, you know, he's not singing it like it's metal. This isn't distortion. This is like natural compression in the voice. That's just a result of his body being uh, totally in sync with his voice. If there's any disconnect between the voice and the and the way that your lungs are being used and the way your body is being used, it's going to show. It's gonna you're gonna be able to hear that disconnect. There is zero disconnect between what he's doing with his vocal technique and what he's doing with his body, and that's what yields such an iconic, like unique, amazing sound that Tommy Kerberg uses. So we're going to go back and talk about a couple moments. Yeah, so the clarity of his diction, the way he tells a story, the energy he brings with his body, it's all connected. Hey, Yap, good to see you. Yeah, so this, I think, yeah, this was obviously before, you know, this is an earlier performance, is very well premiered, but he recently did uh, his first appearance since he was sick in Sweden uh, for the Eurovision Song Contest. Very cool. Very, very cool. Um Yeah. Uh, Sprawless, a little bit of an underbite. Yeah, I see that. Um, we, we talk about the rules, right? Kind of the rules of singing. You want your jaw to be relaxed. You don't want it to come forward. The thing about singers at this level is that they do know all the rules, but they also have figured out when it's right for them to break those rules, if that makes sense. Um... You know, at a point, you know, if you figure out that it works for you and you have proof that it works for you and that it's sustainable, man, then it works. <laughs> he talks like that. Yeah. So if if it works for you, if the underbite really does work for you, then it's boom, go for it. That may be actually a reason that he can get such great, consistent compression. And his voice changes a lot when he opens his voice. So one moment I want to talk about specifically right at the end here. Yeah, I mean, the, the thing I'm trying to say, though, on Tivanti is, like, if his, if it's, the natural, you know, skull isn't going to just place the jaw forward. That's something you can develop over time. Uh, and if it's just there and works there, you know, just in that forward spot, then that's fine. Um you can try to listen for how the ch the sound specifically changes based on his jaw position. That's what I'm trying to get at. My land's only borders, my Close jaw. See, like, as soon as he opens that jaw up like that, it adjusts the sound. My technique and the technique I teach is surrounding getting the jaw out of the way, right? And that's what my teacher was taught. That's what my teacher's teacher was taught. And that's how we have found success in my, you know, singing lineage. However, we wouldn't be able to do something like that. Change the timbre based on the jaw position. That's kind of out of our wheelhouse. Uh, I'm only saying that because that's my perspective and how I can share it. But there's no reason that it doesn't work, and he's perfect proof of that. So if you want to sing in a way 
where you can manipulate your voice using then the sound that you're getting based on your jaw position, that's just another approach, perfectly viable and perfectly excellent, especially based on how he's, he's singing. <laughs> He's still using such flawless vocal principles to make that sound work. Let's go, let's get back to that uh, ascending phrase. There's that one ascending phrase towards the middle of the song where you can hear that transfer from the lower part of his voice up into the higher part of his voice super, super smoothly and cleanly. Uh, and how well he maintains that consistency of timbre, almost better than anyone else. Like you can't hear. Obviously, the difference between a low note and a high note is basically what I'm trying to say. Play. On cross, you notice how he brings in that nasality of the sound? That nasality is going to release the tension in his voice and allow him to bring all of that body energy to the sound. Oh, his Oh Holy Night would be dope. We've heard him sing, Sprawlis, we've heard him sing, uh, I think it was like a metal cover of something uh, or with a with a metal band. Yeah, Tommy Kerberg is amazing. Like his his voice, it's another voice kind of like Marco's where like it's aged to the point where it's so iconic that you can't just, like everything I'm saying is so like orbital. It's so, you know, it's so around what the actual core of his technique is because his, what he's doing is so native to him, right? It's so native to the actual uh, sound that he's developed, the instrument he's developed over his long career. And that's not something you can just go in and be like, well, it's this, 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 and this. I can talk about the different small things that are happening to influence you know, the sound we're getting. But if everyone could just understand how he makes his voice and go do it, then we would have 100 Tommy Kerbergs, right? Yeah, Tao has a really high voice. got that that tiger woods yes right at the end uh the other thing i want to just before we move on the preface about his mo function with the jaw your jaw can do whatever it wants as long as it's muscularly detached you know through your neurotic you know synapses as long as it's muscularly detached 
from the voice and the tongue, right? The tongue has a lot of work to do in making words happen and that kind of thing. The jaw doesn't really do anything to serve that. So he can put his jaw forward as long as it's disconnected. You know, it's not interfering with the muscles that directly impact the voice. And that I, there's nothing audibly that says the jaw is getting in the way anywhere. So he can do whatever he wants, man. It's Tommy Kerberg. Tommy freaking Kerberg, man. Tommy freaking Kerberg. <laughs> okay. Yeah. It's it's a crazy powerful voice. Like this is taking we talk we we watch a lot of like metal singers and, and the occasional opera singer here bringing power in various ways, right? Bringing power that that has different uses, different it yields different colors. But his the way he sings with power is so unique and has like a really really beautiful compression in the sound, uh, and the arrangement of the anatomy is in such a way that he can add as much he can add as much juice he can add as much gas to the fire as he wants and not slip up. There's so much stability in how convicted he is in his sound. It's awesome. Anyway, guys, that was Tommy Kerberg singing uh, anthem from Chess. Beautiful musical. It was written for him. Didn't know that. Learn something every day. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Awesome, awesome, guys. You know what time it is.